Hello, and welcome back to another pen talk. Some of you may have seen my, I got a lot of pens today video. So thank you for tuning in to the individual reviews, or at least the reviews by Pen BBS model. I would be missed to not give a shout out to Bieni, the phenomenal uh, person who takes care of uh, Pen BBS on uh, Etsy and eBay, I'm pretty certain. And she includes this nice little sticker about cats. This is a new one I haven't seen before. So that's one of the pleasures of being in the pen community is you have some amazing people that just do things because they love doing them. And hopefully we all appreciate that. So this is a box that a pen came in that I got. If we turn around to the label in the back, we'll see some designations. It's a 268. It's a clear glass. I'll run my translator on that to see if there's anything interesting in that uh, writing. Yeah, you have to open up this box to see what's inside and it has a little bit of a place on one side that you can easily take that flap out. Some boxes you can't do that because uh, you may ruin the flap or that's what a little knife is for. This is a box we've seen before. Some moon men come in it. Uh, the 322 came in it which is the low low end but this is a branded box. It has Pen BBS on it. And we see the pen. The pen was in a plastic sleeve as, as all the pen BBS pens come in. And it is crystal clear. Clear glass as they refer to uh, the 16 color. The finial on the top of the cap kind of looks like that 322 or the 78G generic. What I find interesting is there's still a fair number of metal bits in this pen. It is a vacuum fill and it's under $20. So Pen BBS is not known for putting literature in their pens. So this is nice. Again, some uh, designations, probably similar to what we saw, but even more generic on the box. In case you didn't know how long the pen was or how thick it was, they give you dimensions. If we open this up, we'll find filling instructions which I think is great. These are interesting instructions. Remove the cap, unscrew the blind cap, pull the piston up, put the pen in ink, push down the piston, ink will be pulled up into the barrel. When ink's in the barrel, you can push down the blind cap and you have a pen with ink in it. I'll do some translation because I'm certain it talks about unscrewing the blind cap here to let the ink flow into the nib and feed in the section so it writes because if you have the cap screwed down this piece here restricts ink flow would work on stopping any leakages in, in airplanes or if the pen is exposed to heat or things like that that might make pens burp. So why uh, was Pen BBS able to make this pen for under $20? The nib and feet are the same as they put on all their pens, so that isn't changed. Injection molded plastic, so that certainly lowers the cost because you're not machining. So you can create more parts more quickly. Uh, they did a nice job, I think, on the finial. They have a small plug here which keeps the metal bits that hold the finial together away from ink which I've uh, had an issue with my like Wingsung 3008 and other pens that have some type of metal here to hold the finial and the clip together but over time ink attacks them and they rust out. Nice uh, labeling on the cap band If you unscrew the cap, and let's see how many turns it takes. Ah, less than one turn. So that's 
some people may consider an improvement. And like I said, this is that standard fine nib with a little bit of an upturn at the end. Um, I did try to pull this out. I couldn't. It feels okay, but it is certainly on the light side. You know, we've compared those weights before of this pen with other pens, which I consider similar. One of the things that amazes me is they use metal bits here at the back end uh, for this vacuum filler. I mean, on the 355, the uh, pump filler, they went to plastic. So it's not like they don't know how to do plastic. And that has the uh, flattened ends in it so you can unscrew this and take it all apart. I'm assuming everything pulls out through the back. So I, I think it's great that they've uh, still kept metal parts there. I'm pretty certain this is the same shaft that's in the uh, more expensive 456. This seems to work very, very well. So I'll try to do a filling online. I can't flush this like I normally would do because I'm not going to put water in this. It fits in the hand okay, but it does feel small and a little bit not as substantial as the 456 which is to me one of my favorite pens it does post very nicely and very securely so that's a plus and uh, doesn't really change the balance so it's balanced very well in the crooks of the hand that section is about as small as i like but it's it's very usable and very comfortable as a nice flare out at the end so they, uh, Pen BBS, I've never found a section of theirs that I don't find comfortable for long writing. And, you know, Pen BBS are pens made by pen nerds, so you would expect them to be good writing instruments. So we're going to try to fill this up uh, on camera. I expect this nib to write like all the other Pen BBS nibs that are like this, but we'll see. So one thing I'll give the uh, Pen BBS designers and engineers credit for is that cap liner in there. Very nice. It's clear, so it really doesn't show up when you look at the pen this way. And it does protect that metal nut there from any corrosion based on any ink you might be using. So, good job. So what are we going to compare the 2682? Well, to me, the first pen to compare it to is the 322 which is their under $10 pen. Nice nib. Not a nib that I grew to love. So I had two of them. I gave one away. I kept one because you need it for videos like this. But this is a cartridge converter, a different clip. The finial at the top looks very similar, but different construction, which we'll look at. And here's the pen that it is its big brother, is the 456, which is their first vac filler. I don't have anything clear without ink in it, and the ones without ink are not clear, so they're not going to be representative. And then the Twisby Vac Mini, which I bought a number of years ago and I tried to use as an everyday writer, but it never quite fit the bill. So these all have different characteristics to them. This is injection molded. This is injection molded. This is injection molded. This is turned acrylic. So to me, injection molding is certainly a viable way. Um, Mont Blanc uses it for, I think, almost all their pens. Pelican uses it for at least the caps and maybe some pen bodies, but the uh, striped ones or a piece of sheet plastic, which is rolled and, and made into a tube. So everybody used different methodologies. I think in the early days in the low-end uh, Chinese pen market, the injection molded pens were made of a uh, low-cost resin, maybe a styrene or whatever. They cycled the molds very, very quickly, so they wanted to pump out a number of parts as quickly as possible. And when you do that, that builds up stress in the plastic, and that can end up with parts that crack or don't survive long uh, over time. And if you're not using a, 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 a well-formulated resin, PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate, or precious resin is one that a lot of people use. So I don't know what pen BBS is using in the 268, but all these pens feel similar to the touch, so you can't delineate that. 
The 456 is definitely the most robust feeling pen. It weighs the most, uh, I think so. We'll double check that when we go through the weights. I'll put the weights up here so you can look at them. So as you can see, the 456, I've done a lot of work on this pen. Worked on the nib. Uh, it now has a Nemo Seam uh, 0.6 stub in it, which continues to write well and impress me. Um, so there's your comparisons. I'm not going to compare it to any other pens. I think now we need to ink it up or do a little bit more investigation, then ink it up and write with it. So you may ask, uh, what are examples of uh, a finish or a look or colors that you can't get with injection molding? Well, here's three good examples. We have the Pen BBS Smog, which those ribbons of white in that clear acrylic. Here we have that Moon Man M600 with that checkerboard pattern. And here we have a Moon Man, I think it's an N2. Those are looks that you're not going to get with injection molding because you can't fix a pattern like this when you're swirling hot plastic into a mold. So here we have these uh, three pens posted. And the 268 is a little bit shorter than the 456, which is what we would expect. You know, it has the 308 style clip on it, so it's not the sword design, nor is it the type of clip that was on the 322. Um, I have replaced this uh, Pen BBS nib with a Nemo C nib, but it doesn't impact anything. Let's take a closer look at the sections. I think care shows um, a number of differences between these three pens. So we have this uh, metal piece between the section and the barrel, which is, doesn't, hear, doesn't have it on the 268. So that's a, a cost reduction. Um, this doesn't have a nib assembly, which most other Pen BBS pens have, including the 456, except for the 322. That was the other one. The 322 also has a smaller, more of a number five style nib in it. This is also one piece here like it is on the VAC Mini, where even though I couldn't get this one apart, it isn't, it does unscrew, as EDC found out when I read his Scrivener blog, and there's a link in the description to that. Here's the listing on Etsy from the Pen BBS official store. It was $16.99, and if you only buy one item, or more than one item, it's $6 shipping. When I checked eBay, I found that it was being sold for about the same price on eBay, but shipping is included with free shipping. So you're going to pay about $22 if you just buy the pen. And here's a eBay listing that uh, from uh, Pen BBS. So they also list the pen on Etsy and eBay at the same price. So what ink to put in? And eh, this one struck my fancy. I want something with a little bit of color in it and maybe show off the nib. And I haven't used this, as you can see, there's still a lot of ink in there, and hopefully it'll fit over the feed and I can actually use the vac filler to fill it up. Here's the color card for the Edelstein Aquamarine ink. It is definitely uh, blue-green ink. I don't catch any sheen there. And the chromatography also basically indicates there's interesting some yellow down here. I think that may be an aberration of what how I did the chromatography, but it's a pretty clean blue with a little bit of green in it. So I try to arrange the lighting that'll show this off as much as possible. So we've unscrewed the blind cap, we pull the piston all the way up. We're going to insert it all the way into the bottle of ink. I wish it had that little valley like they do on Iroshizuku inks. So we're just going to go down in one swell swoop and pull up some ink. Not a bad first fill. As you can see, it's about half full. So one of the challenges, how do you get a little bit more of a fill? We'll try to do that off camera. So I've pulled the piston up till it's at the bottom of the ink. And I put it in a little bit of an angle because I want to make certain that we cover that feed and we're going to try another plunge. Yeah, it looks like a little bit more of a fill. I'm satisfied with that. I'm certain I could try some type of power filler thing, but I've done that in the past and for a few 
tenths of a milliliter of ink, I'm not willing to put the effort in. So we're going to see how this nib writes. So you'll notice a little bit of ink there in the cap. I've also noticed a little bit of a condensation in the cap. Uh, our AC went out, so the house is about 15 degrees warmer than it usually is. And if you do see things like that, it's generally temperature changes. When these pens are in a stable environment, they are a very good. Um, haven't had any issues with them, but I just needed to show that. And you can see that uh, nut there that holds down that top finial on the cap and also holds in the clip. Yeah, it's that standard, very sturdy, very stiff clip. This is like all the other PEM EBS nibs. It's very smooth. You get a little bit of feedback, but this is a paper with a little texture to it, this Fabriano paper, so that's to be expected. Yeah, it's, it's about medium flow. So, I like the pen. I think it's an excellent value. Feels good in the hand, not as good as a 4.56. So don't don't consider this like a, a cheap 4.56. It's a pen on its own. It just happens to share a filling system and a lot of internal parts with the 4.56. So now we have to rate this pen. And I'm going to give it a 9.2. One check for the filling system and one check for good ergonomics. You know, I like the pen. It could easily be an everyday writer and, and at the price point, you know, it's something that, you know, you don't feel concerned about carrying it around. The other thing about this pen I think is a little different than the 456 is you can definitely see that reserve, this um, area, and here's the seal above it. So as you open up the blind cap, which you should do if you're doing any extensive writing, you have to pretty much get it all the way open. And then you'll see that ink fill up that section. I found you almost have to get it all the way out to get it to do that. And there it's all full, it's all full now. So it's probably you know, two tenths of a mill or whatever, it's probably good for a page or so. But if you don't open it up, and to me I just open it up when I write with it, it just makes things easier. Because if you forget, then it starts getting dry and you go, what's going on? And, you know, my mind doesn't automatically say, oh, you got to open up the blind cap. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a another interesting new pen from PenBBS. Pen that I can easily recommend. So may you have many great writing experiences. Enjoy putting ink on paper with a pen you love. So we've reached the end of this video. Enjoy your writing. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. We're going to say bye until the next video. Nice ink pen combo.